Good morning everyone. A very warm welcome, if a little bit wet, to our worship for Sunday, July the 5th, 2021. There's a verse in Isaiah 65 which I came across today. And God says, Behold, I will create new heavens and a new earth. And a little bit later, For as the days of a tree, so will be the days of my people. The tree behind me is an acer planted about 20 years ago and uh, it's great to think about how trees feature all through the Bible and as we come towards the end of our series looking at trees in the Bible let's just be glad in our awesome Creator God who has made hundreds and hundreds of varieties of tree. Let's worship him together, the maker of all things. As we come into God's presence, let's just be still for a few moments and collect our thoughts and open our hearts and minds to receive from him. The Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Let us rejoice and shout for joy, giving God the glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Lord, Speak to us, that we may hear your word. Move among us, that we may behold your glory. Receive our prayers, that we may learn to trust you. Amen. St. Paul says, Be imitators of God. Love as Christ loved. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice. So let us confess our sins to God, who forgives us in Christ. My God, for love of you I desire to hate and forsake all sins by which I have ever displeased you. And I resolve by the help of your grace to commit them no more and to avoid all opportunities of sin. Help me to do this, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, grant us pardon and forgiveness of all our sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
first Bible reading is from the book of the prophet Zechariah, chapter 4, beginning at the first verse. Then the angel who talked with me returned and woke me up. Like someone awakened from sleep, he asked me, What do you see? I answered, I see a solid gold lampstand with a bowl at the top and seven lamps on it with seven channels to the lamps. Also there are two olive trees by it, one on the right of the bowl and the other on its left. I asked the angel who talked with me, What are these, my lord? He answered, Do you not know what these are? No, my lord, I replied. So he said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. What are you, mighty mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you will become level ground. Then he will bring out the capstone to shouts of, God bless it, God bless it. 
Then the word of the Lord came to me. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hands will also complete it. Then you will know that the Lord Almighty has sent me to you. Who dares despise the day of small things, since the seven eyes of the Lord that range throughout the earth will rejoice when they see the chosen capstone in the hand of Zerubbabel. Then I asked the angel, What are these two olive trees on the right and the left of the lampstand? Again I asked him, What are these two olive branches beside the two gold pipes that pour out golden oil? He replied, Do you not know what these are? No, my lord, I said. So he said, These are the two who are anointed to serve the Lord of all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. This morning's reading is taken from Mark's Gospel, chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. Jesus left there and went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things, they asked? What's this wisdom that has been given him, that he even does miracles? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offence at him. Jesus said to them, Only in his hometown, among his relatives and in his own house is a prophet without honour. He could not do any miracles there, except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them, and he was amazed at their lack of faith. Then Jesus went round teaching from village to village, calling the twelve to him. He sent them out two by two and gave them authority over evil spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra tunic. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, shake the dust off your feet when you leave as a testimony against them. They went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi, this is Scott and the Vicar of St. David's Church and Riverbank Cafe Church in Moss Bank. And it's a pleasure to be able to speak to you this week and share some thoughts on the passage from Zechariah chapter 4. It's a privilege to speak to you all and a big warm welcome to everyone at Parish Church. I've got to start with a confession and it's this. Sometimes I go to church on a Sunday and I wish I didn't have to. I go in with a heavy heart and I know that I'll probably come out of it sometimes with a heavy one than when I went in. Not all the time but sometimes. Not because of who is there and don't worry it's not because I'm going to be at yours either this weekend but really it can seem more of a struggle than a blessing at times. There are highs but it's hard work. It's last year or so, even more so. I find myself asking God, is this what it's meant to be like? What is it you want? The thing is, I've had moments when I've known that God is there, and if one ever has the privilege of experiencing Jesus, 
very spirit. It's exciting. And one doesn't want to leave that moment. I want that, but far more. But far more for me, for you, and for I. Spur of thought then, for the Jewish people here in this moment, in Zechariah, returning from exile. They have had years in captivity. Not just wondering when, or even if things will get better, but remembering the moments of history when they were flying high, from the heights of Moses and the Exodus that forms those great stories, to all the victories under King David and the great temple that was built after that. Someone can only imagine a sense of excitement and optimism as they make their way back to lands given to them, as they are now set free again, set to see the fulfilment of God's promises. It must have been an incredible moment as they made their way there. There they have been led by the leadership of Zerubbabel and Joshua, king and a priest. And as Zechariah would later say, someone will come who will be both a king and a priest. But it's freedom at last for these people. The thing is, though, it's not that long before the joy of their freedom is not quite as sweet tasting as they thought it would be. The thing is, the lands that they go into are not that great. The crops become blighted by drought and disease, so now they're effectively living freely at the poverty level. Alongside the same ruler who let them go historically dies, and most likely his son ended up plundering them from even more food supplies than what little they've got. So they're poor, and they're now even more struggling and poor than before. Also, while they managed to build houses for themselves, at least they have let rebuilding of the temple slide. That great symbol for God's presence being with them, that great symbol for God being at the heart of their lives together, and it's not happening, it's not even close to being rebuilt. I bet there are a few in that day were thinking, blimey, maybe we should just go back. Even that was easier in captivity. There'll be a few more definitely wondering, if this will get better, will this change? Thankfully they hear it will change, but there's going to be a challenge too. They hear God speaking to them through two prophets, Haggai and Zechariah. Zechariah lasted a bit longer, but generally they were there about the same period. Well, they asked the people to do a couple of things. Firstly, to appoint Zerubbabel to be ruler. And secondly, and more importantly, rebuild a temple. Get it done. The people had been granted freedom and they were struggling in the conditions, but they had to get on with the temple. They, in effect, were not worshipping God like they should and meant to. Essentially, though, they're urging them, rebuild the temple. So do these things and a new age will begin. Do these things and it will get better. You'll find that anything is possible. It is in this part of the story, chapter 4, that Zechariah is awakened by an angel. And it says that Zechariah has a vision. It was his fifth one. Imagine his fifth one. Having one vision is exciting and imagine God. But they were coming along like hopefully England wins this weekend. Hopefully, fingers crossed. So what does he see? I see a solid gold lamp stand with a bolt at the top and seven lights on it, with seven channels on the light. That's easy, isn't it? We can rest easy now that it has been made clear to us. What on earth does that mean? Well, from the lamp stand in the tabernacle under Moses, it's a sign of God's life-giving and sustaining presence. It would practically provide light for the priests to do their work, but it was also a sign that God's sustaining presence would never stop. Later, it would represent the churches being in God's presence, always being lit in the book of Revelation. There will be a light but also always sustained by God. The number seven was the number of perfection of completeness. In effect, there will be a light, there will be a blessing to the nations. And the bowl on top will be a reservoir of olive oil that would use to keep the lampstand burning. In the tabernacle, the priest would make sure to check on them every day so that the light is always burning in God's presence. They would never let it go out. Here, there was a picture of reservoir, bowl, there would be a rich supply of resources through God that would sustain them. And alongside this image are two olive trees, one on the right, the other on the left. In effect, we have this picture painted of God's people having access to God's bountiful resources. The light will be burning constantly. The Spirit of God will bless them. They not only have a reservoir for the oil to keep on burning, they also have the olive trees there to make sure it never runs dry. It's a picture of abundant supply, an abundant blessing. And bear in mind, this is in a time of poverty. But they are being promised abundance and blessing through God's Spirit. 
in effect, it will change. Most especially, they will build the temple. They will get what they need. Zechariah is given to speak to Zerubbabel and urges him to rebuild the temple. It will happen. This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Look, Zerubbabel, it's your task to make sure the temple is rebuilt and to encourage you that it will be. It won't be through human might or wealth or military strength, but through God's spirit. And just to confirm what he's spoken, continues in verse 7. Who thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain, and shall bring forth the headstone, shoutings, crying, grace unto it. Its outcome is guaranteed. Any mountain, any obstacle, opposition any obstacle will be leveled by god into a flat surface nothing is going to stop this no obstacle will stop the completion of the temple being built the headstone the final piece will be put into place it goes on to say the temple is going to be rebuilt they will still need encouragement though you see what be as majestic as the one solomon completed it won't be the same as in their heyday some will look at it and be discouraged well it's not as good as it used to be with a cry that rings out for some people but says god in verse 10 for who hath despised the day of small things for they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of zerubbabel with those seven they are the eyes of the lord which run to and fro through the whole earth in effect god is saying to the people he will be pleased with the work it isn't about what it looks like but ultimately it's about their faithfulness it's about what was before but about but about not about what was before but through Zerubbabel they will see the temple complete and they'll rejoice through these two anointed people of Zerubbabel and Joshua these two olive trees anointed with oil anointed with the Holy Spirit the temple will be rebuilt God likes to rebuild he likes to restore God likes an obstacle to overcome but of course as much as this spots them about what will happen and how God is going to restore them and complete the temple even though they neglected it even they're called to repent as well for letting this slide and for not doing it. God is also pointing forward to something much bigger, something more poignant. This work of rebuilding the temple, even in the face of mountainous obstacles, will be completed. But it's pointing ahead to a new temple, a new priest and king, and a fulfilment of what's been promised, which will fulfill this even more. We will know this, of course, is embodied in the coming Messiah, and the one we now know as jesus now obviously we live in a different day than the one that zachariah spoke into yet we too also face a rebuild of sorts now i get emails from spring harvest and the theme for 2022 is restore renew rebuild and it's easy to see why this is the case after the past year or so but also even what was before that what will happen to our churches what challenges will we face by the end of this year will we have the old challenges of working out how on earth are we going to connect with people who seems a million miles away culturally from what we know as church Will we have the same problems of money of buildings but even more so that we'll have to figure out what does it mean to worship god online let alone offline we'll have to try and know that being a disciple of jesus is about and what on earth what should, does that look like in this day and age and along with all of that what do we do about sexuality, gender issues, racial issues and many, many more things which is the church across denominations is struggling to try and work out and balance that out. We'll have a moment probably soon where restrictions will be lifted and be able to sing, be able to chat over tea and coffee and it will certainly lift us for a bit. It's not going to last. We'll begin to see even more clearly what's ahead. We'll find people who won't come back. And what's ahead will feel like a mountain to climb, even more than what we felt before the pandemic came along. Though that's cheered you up, hasn't it? You're welcome. However, thankfully, it doesn't end there. While this story of Zechariah is a message for the day and for what was to come in Jesus, it should remind us of a few crucial things that we need to hold on to. Nothing we do when it's easy or when it's a struggle for God is in vain. It wasn't the temple they had before and it certainly wasn't the majesty what was to come. But God was with them. God helped them to move forward and complete what he promised. And that was what God wanted and was pleased with. Whatever happens in the next months, 
whatever even happens to this church or the one I'm at or the church of England itself and beyond that, Jesus will fulfill his kingdom. Jesus will return. Jesus will before everyone become priest and king over this nation and every nation. Even when that feels miles away or impossible, it doesn't change that coming reality and the fact that it will happen. We will in one way or another whenever see it for ourselves. We do not struggle, we do not step forward in vain. God calls us to faithfulness in who we are and what we have. What is God asking of you here? What is God calling you to be in the coming months? Whatever you do, be faithful to God and God will rejoice in you. And you'll find rejoicing in what God will do too. Forget what has gone before in terms of whether it's better or worse. Just go where God is going to want you to go right now. Build his kingdom, his church in who you are and what you have to offer. That's enough for God. God wants your faithfulness. And finally, actually the best bit with all of that, what I've just said. Actually, these words remind us that we have a limitless resources and limitless blessings available in and through God's spirit. In his spirit is a constant reservoir and channel of olive oil and blessing and beauty available in and through Christ. As much as the rebuild, the renew seems impossible at moments. That's actually the kind of situation that God loves. So we can't underestimate just what God can do when the obstacles grow too big or the challenge feels beyond us. As we've been thinking about through these Trees of the Bible series, whatever the branch looks like, whatever the fruit is growing or not growing yet, we can't underestimate the majesty of the tree that we're connected to. We can't underestimate just what and in whom we are connected to in Christ by the Spirit. In Jesus, we are connected to a limitless supply of God, essentially, of his spirit, of his power, of his majesty, and of his love. Our call is to be faithful in who we are and what we have. Our call especially is to make sure each one of us commits to focusing on Jesus so we can see what Jesus will do in us. Our call is to be faithful in who we are and what we have, but especially faithful to Jesus. I call especially to make sure that each one of us commits to focusing on Jesus in the coming months ahead, to focus on building the temple, not the buildings of course, but Christ church, our lives of worship, our families of worship, a community of worship. For every one of us here, it's got to be about Jesus. That's our priority and in whom we set our sights and our hearts. And what happens next may be less than we hope for or something completely different. But it will be what God wants and in our faithfulness we may find it just might be limitless and it might just take us by surprise. Thank you for listening. Please do take care and I'll keep you in our prayers. God bless. Gracious God, it is our privilege to pray for your world and your people. And so we put our prayers at your disposal this day. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those in our church community, our life together in Christ, and our witness to this world. Especially, we pray for the members of our congregation who are currently isolating. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who are waiting for something important, a birth, a job, a visit, a hospital appointment, a vaccination, a world of forgiveness, especially those who are longing for a way out of isolation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, Every person we have mentioned is loved and known by you more than we can ever imagine. We entrust them to you in confidence, knowing that you will use our prayers for their healing and well-being. For we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who is alive forever with God and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Just a few notices. Next Sunday, the 11th of July, 10 a.m. It's a service of the word and there'll also be an online version. It'll be our very last look at our series examining trees in the Bible and this one will be focusing on Revelation 22 and our preacher will be Emma Howarth. Just to remind you about our Zoom prayer meetings, weekday mornings, 7 o'clock Monday, 8 o'clock Wednesday, 8 o'clock Friday. A reminder about how to give financially to Parish Church. In the building there's a card machine near the exit door or online you can set up a monthly payment. The details are there or on a phone call at local rate. Again a 10 minute call will sort it. And last but not least Sadly, due to COVID, the welcome that was planned for Debs Davis, our new curate, has had to be postponed to Sunday, September the 5th. There were too many people who had to self-isolate after one of the ordinance had tested positive for COVID after the licensing event. Anyway, September the 5th is the day of Debs's actual licensing when she begins her ministry with us and we'll have tea, coffee and cake in the church building after our 10 a.m. gathering. Look forward to seeing you all there.
a final blessing. God the Creator, surround us with your presence. Christ the Redeemer, cover us with your love. Holy Spirit the Strengthener, be about us to protect us. May we be immersed in the peace and power of God, that the Holy Three may abide in us and we in them. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be upon us and remain with us and our loved ones, now and always. Amen.